For me, growing up, it was always family first. We really lived by that. Everything we did, almost everything we did, was, was centered around the family, and cars you know, was a big part of that as well. Um, so I have two brothers, two sisters, mom and dad. So cars wasn't at the center of the family, but it was definitely an integral part of, of what we did as a family. I drive a 2012 Audi R8. It's a V8, a gated six-speed manual. Um, it's referred to as a Gen 1 because it was the first generation of the R8. Um, when it comes to hardware, it has H&R coilovers and a stainless tube exhaust. That's, that's pretty much it on the hardware upgrades. Exterior, uh, it has the um, aftermarket honeycomb grille. Uh, carbon fiber canards in the front. Also has uh, rocker panels that are in white, uh, carbon fiber mirrors, and then in the back you have a carbon fiber rear diffuser and also a carbon fiber uh, rear spoiler and then the, the OEM spoiler that was in white is also uh, done in carbon fiber as well. Yeah, and then the interior is stock except for a BFI uh, heavyweight shift knob that I put in about a year ago. But this car I've had for two years. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I sort of wanted, I love my 911. I wish I, I could have kept that and also bought this and someday like to get another Porsche. But, um, but this car, yeah, really checked all the boxes for me. It's not gonna break the bank when it comes to service. Um, the drivability, it's, it's really a, a good drive. Obviously, it, it can go like heck when you want to, but it really does just drive pretty much like a normal car. And the fact that you can take it to any Audi dealer in the country is a big benefit. And so, um, so yeah, it was, when I was looking for that next car, um, I actually talked to a bunch of people. Um, I had a conversation with my nephew, who is sort of the walking encyclopedia of cars and um, his name's Ethan and you know I told him what I wanted and he you know we narrowed it down to a few cars but, but the R8 really was the, the the one that you know checked all the boxes. Um, I think it's a pretty neat story. My dad uh, came to the US in 1955, he was 21 at the time his family never owned a car in Italy, so I imagine he got on the streets of New York after going through immigration. It's like, wow, you know, imagine the cars in 1955, 55 Chevys or 55 Fords. Um, my guess is he was pretty impressed um, because two years later, he bought a 57 Ford Fairlane. And, um, you know, both of my grandparents on both sides, my mom's side and my dad's side, um, out of the four of them, none of them have a driver's license, none of them owned a car. So my dad's really the first uh, person in his family uh, to own a car. And so to go from that, he became a real avid classic car collector, mainly Fords. He started with a 1932 Model A Ford. That was the first car that I can remember him having as a, as a weekend car. That was a really neat car. He had that for a good number of years, took to that to some national uh, car shows. And so that was really my first experience going to car shows um, on, the, on the weekend. Then he started collecting 1955, 56, and 57 Thunderbirds. Um, I think 57 was his favorite, also my favorite. Had the removable hardtop with a porthole window. Um, most of these cars had V8s. Um, not super powerful or super fast, but just really clean looking cars. And he also, um, and then started collecting Mustangs, 65, all the way into the early 70s. Um, in the heyday of his collection, he had 30 odd cars, 35 or so cars. Um, he was a mushroom farmer, so we had a, a you know, mushroom plant, big warehouse, a garage where a mechanic you know, fixed all the trucks and tractors. And so that's where most of his cars were kept. Most of them weren't kept at home. We had a few that we kept in the garage at home. Um, 
So that was, yeah, it was, it was fun. We worked there in the summers. Uh, and then we'd go in and check out, you know, his latest barn find or, or whatever car he wanted to buy or was, was trying to track down. We kind of joke about it. He was uh, similar to Wayne Carini, but just not uh, chasing the big high-end cars. He was normally chasing Mustangs and, and, and Thunderbirds. So it was kind of fun. Um, one of our, our old family stories is we were all, he was going to buy a Mustang, I think it was in the late 60s, and waiting for him to bring it home, and he actually stopped to grab something for dinner on the way home and met someone and sold it. So we never got to see the car. He bought it, sold the same day. So that was, uh, I think he liked kind of the chase and, and the, the buying and selling and negotiating, um, which was, you know, much so, so different than what he did um, for his everyday job at the, at the mushroom farm. Yeah, I've been pretty fortunate. Um, I've been in sales 20 plus years, and the, the last handful of years, I've had a global role, so it's, it's really been an opportunity for me to go to Europe and Asia, uh, South America, even the Middle East for a trip. And if I can, I usually try to book a few days vacation and, and do some car things. It's, I'm normally by myself, and so I'll you know, hit a car museum. I've done the Porsche factory tour. I've gone through the Porsche museum. I've done the Mercedes museum. We had a family vacation a few years ago in Italy, so we, we made sure the trip included a day at the Ferrari museum. Um, and so, so it's always, I, I've really been fortunate to either travel for work or travel on vacation and and try to squeeze in at least a little bit of cars. We, we did a, a West Coast vacation and we did the Peterson uh, Car Museum as a family. So it doesn't take up our whole vacation, but we try to sneak in um, some car uh, attractions when we can. Yeah, so I think as, um, as my kids get older, I'm kind of looking forward to them, you know, starting a family and eventually getting to the part where I got where they're going to bring in um, some nice cars and, and maybe I'll be switching up to different cars and so I, so I think it all goes full circle you know if we if I really believe in and live by family first and make sure my wife and my four kids are safe and have what they want and are doing well in school or doing well in their careers and and working hard and um, doing this up you know, I, I try to make my, my dad and my mom proud every day, and I think my kids are trying to do the same thing and, and make us proud as well. And so I'm hoping I'm sort of passing on um, that legacy. I don't know if it's really called the legacy, but... I've actually owned the car for two years and it's been really fun to drive. Uh, I think one of the things surprising for me is uh, younger kids really like it. Um, I didn't realize this because I'm a little too old for these video games, but there's some video games out there where the R8 is one of the cars you can pick. Um, so it's pretty common if I pull into a grocery store, Home Depot or Lowe's, um, it's the, the 15 and under crowd that will come over and want to look at it. and. You no, know, I never saw one outside of their uh, video game. So it's, it's been a real fun car to drive. Um, people always want to talk about it, so it's, it's great whether I'm at the gas station or Walmart or really wherever I'm at. Um, I usually get to meet a lot of nice people in the, the area. I'm Jim Filippini. I live in Wake Forest, North Carolina. I'm a real person with a real story with a real ride. Wow, if I hit the lottery today, 
I'm not sure what, I guess I'd buy a few cars, but what car I would buy, I think Ferrari is, is top on my list. Um, the 458 in particular, I think the lines are just so classic. Um, like Lamborghinis, um, but I, yeah, I think, I think the Italian cars I like. You know, the newer McLarens, I mean, there's just so many um, nice cars. The, like a 911 Turbo, I would love to have in the garage. Uh, so there's a, yeah, there's four or five cars I think I would, I'd like to have if I hit the lottery.